Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one. This is Legally Engineer. Under 1236, we discussed that who are the people, the person na entitled to pay mm -hmm. uh, to the creditor, mm -hmm. babayad dun sa creditor. Or authorized to pay. Authorized to pay, pay. the debt oh. uh, to the creditor. You know, yes. Under Article 1240, yung reverse naman, the mm -hmm. person to whom payment shall be made. So under yes. Article 1240, yes. payment shall be made to the person in whose favor the obligation has been constituted or his successor in interest or any person authorized to receive it. Mm -hmm. So take note of the the Sino -sino ba dito yung pwedeng creditor. Uh, oh, wag kang basta bayad ng bayad, tira na tira. Yung persons to whom payment shall be made. Oh, so payment yeah. shall be made to first the creditor mm -hmm. or obligee, the person in whose favor obligation has been constituted, obviously. Yes. Second, his successor in interest like an heir or assignee mm -hmm. ng original creditor or obligee natin and then third any person authorized to, to receive, receive it, it. Uh, mm -hmm. the creditor referred to must be the creditor at the time the payment is to, to be, be made, made. Yeah. not at the constitution of the obligation because yeah. pwede magbago yan uh, oh, oh, hence if a person is subrogated to the right of the creditor payment should be made to the new creditor mm -hmm. Makikita natin later on kung mm -hmm. ano yung uh, value ng uh, provision Portion, natin. Yes. Example, yes. si debtor, may utang siya kay creditor na, let's say, 1,000 pesos. No? And in this case, uh, si debtor must pay to whom? So, the debtor must pay to the creditor or any person authorized by the creditor or in case of his death, his heirs or any person authorized by law. Payment to any other person is not valid except as provided in Article 1241, Paragraph 2. Mm -hmm. Ano, ano ba? Ang natin, 1241, Paragraph 2, Attorney Oy. So, ang sabi sa 1241, Paragraph 2, Payment made to a third person shall be valid in so far at, as it has redounded to the benefit mm -hmm. of the creditor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, pupunta natin yan uh, a little later. Pero, ang malinaw lang doon, uh, entitled lang siya. So, ang sinasabi lang dito, so, yung payment to any other person is not valid except if the payment has redounded to his benefit. Mm, okay. So, I have two questions, Tony. First, um, in the event that the creditor dies, mm -hmm. no, may outstanding obligation, may utang kay creditor, eh namatay si creditor, Mm -mm. Extinguish ba yung obligation doon? Kasi may nabagit kanina ng death doon sa extinguishment uh -oh. ng obligation. Si creditor na matay, extinguish ba yung utang niya? Yung utang yung sa kanya? Yung mga pa-utang uh -oh. niya? O na matay na rin ba? Pag namatay ba yung creditor? Namatay na rin ba yung mga pa-utang niya? The answer is no. no. Uh, sinong kukuha mo yun? Sinong mag-receive nun? Pwedeng yung mm. guardian? Mm -hmm. Pwedeng yung executor or administrator of the estate of the deceased and assignee or liquidator of partnership or corporation as well as any other person who may be authorized to do so by law. So take note ah, hindi porket namatay na yung creditor nyo, magsasaya na kayo. Na <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> walang ganun, walang ganun. And uh, yung second question ko nga is, what if nagkaroon ng payment by mistake pero si debtor naman, he acted in good faith? Can you consider, can that be excusable at any point? The, the good faith on the part of the debtor in paying to the wrong party is not an excuse. Take note, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na yung good faith naman ako eh. Kala ko siya yung creditor sa kanya ako nagbayad. Yung pala na-scam ka niya. Nabudol-budol ka pa. So, ano? Wag ano. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, lang, you have to be uh, very, very vigilant. vigilant and keen on paying to the right person. Kasi nung kanino lang kayo, hanggat maaari, kung kanino lang kayo may utang, dun lang kayo magbayad. Ah, halimbawa, ito, turn uh, 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 Halimbawa, may utang, may utang na sa akin. Okay. Uh, ikaw ang debtor, ang uh, uh, creditor. Then, here comes si Stranger S, lumapit sa iyo. Uh, uh, Sabi niya sa iyo, uh, attorney, uy, pinapakolect po sa akin ni attorney Maralit uh -oh. yung utang niya daw pong sampung libo. Uh -oh. Ikaw naman, in good faith, 
binayaran mo itong si Stranger S. Pero hindi ako ganun sa totoo uh -huh. buhay. Kaya nga rin lang, kaya nga rin lang. Kaya nga rin lang. Bahit ka nga. Eh, here comes uh, attorney Marali. Pumunta ko sa'yo. Attorney Uwe, yung matang mo sa'yo ng sampo ng Aba ibo. naman, eh, pinakolekta mo na ha. Sino? Sino nang malekta? <laughs> yung si third person. Aba, hindi ko kilala yun. Sino yun? Hmm, paano pagkaganon? Anong mangyayari? Attorney Uwe, anong mangyayari? So, Would your obligation to pay me 10,000 pesos be extinguished kasi you're claiming that you paid the third person in good faith? So, hindi. It will not be extinguished. Yung obligation to pay. So, therefore, ang sagot, ay, ang effect pala nun, mag, uh, I am also, I will still be bound to pay. pay yung kautangan ko kay Attorney Maralid kahit nagbayad ako dun sa stranger. So, my recourse now is to go after dun sa stranger, sa third Magpahit person. Magpahit ka ng criminal case. Oo. Oh, oh, Nabudol-budol ka na. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, normally dyan, si Attorney, eh, ano ba dapat ginawa niya? Magtanong muna, may SPA ka oh, ba? Oh, may special oh, power oh. of attorney ka ba? Are you kaya, you talk to Attorney Maralid. Oh, oh, totoo ba? Mo. Totoo ba? Talaga ba? <laughs> Oo. Oh, talaga ba dito ka nagpapakulang ka? Yan. So, take note of that. No, kailangan-kailangan yan kasi marami ngayong mandaloko scammers. Okay? So, yes. So, that's it. Yes. So, let's now proceed to Article 1241. Payment to a person who is incapacitated to administer his property shall be valid if he has kept the thing delivered or in so far as the payment has been beneficial to him. Mm -hmm. Payment made to a third person shall also be valid in so far as it has redounded to the benefit of the creditor. Mm -hmm. Such benefit to the creditor need not be proved in the following cases. First, if, the pay if after the payment, the third person acquires the creditor's rights, Second, if the creditor ratifies the payment to the third person. Third, if by the creditor's conduct, the debtor has been led to believe that the third person had authority to receive payment. So, Article 1241 basically talks about the effect of payment to an incapacitated person mm -hmm. and the effect of payment to a third person. Yeah. So, yung first paragraph, it talks about the effect of payment to an incapacitated person, meaning the creditor is in an incapacitated mm -hmm. person. At yung second paragraph, it talks about payment to a third person okay. who so, is not the yes. creditor. So, yeah. isa natin, doon muna tayo sa payment sa incapacitated yes. person. So, payment to a person who is incapacitated to administer or manage his property generally is not valid. Okay, uh -huh. hindi valid. Incapacitated, incapacitated nagbayad nga, ka eh, eh, di ba? Oh, oh. So, For example, ng incapacitated person, minors, minors diba? or kaya yung wards. Yeah, wards. Yeah, under guardianship, di ba? Uh -oh. So, in that case, um, you are not supposed to pay to an incapacitated person. So, generally, but payment to an incapacitated person it's is not, not valid unless such incapacitated person kept the yeah, thing paid or na delivered yeah. or was benefited by, by the, the payment. payment. Okay. So, general rule, ulitin natin, payment to an incapacitated person or to the pers or to any person who is incapacitated to administer his property mm -hmm. is not valid. So, ibig sabihin, hindi may extinguish yung obligation. Mm -hmm. Except, if, he, if that incapacitated person has kept the thing delivered or ang pangalawang exception kaya naman ay it has redounded to the benefit of that incapacitated person yes so in that case kapag nagkaroon when you pay to an incapacitated person you do it uh, at your own risk mm. kasi if it will not be beneficial or the, the incapacitated person will not be benefited or would not keep yes. it diba? kasi nga hindi niya alam yes. kung ano ibig sabihin no, ng payment mm. mangyayari dyan in the absence of this benefit the debtor may be made to pay again yeah. oh, the creditor's yeah. guardian or by the incapacitated person himself when that incapacitated person acquires or recovers recovers his Capacity. capacity. Now, oh, yung yeah. proof of the benefit na nag down to the incapacitated person shall be incumbent. a burden or incumbent upon, upon the debtor who pays. Who pays. Oh. Ipoprove mo yun na it was beneficial naman. He kept it naman. Eh. So, 
Uh, Ikaw mag-prove is... nun. Hindi yung, hindi yung guardian, or yung hindi yung incapacitated person. So, he who so, alleges must prove. So, you, you allege that it was beneficial, so you prove that indeed it was. Uh -oh. So, para safe, huwag ka na magbayad sa incapacitated person. General rule yun, guys. Oh. Huwag na huwag kayo magbayad sa incapacitated. Yes. So, for example, si Detor, nag-deliver siya ng, let's say, 1,000 pesos to C. And si C turns out to be a minor, minor under guardianship mm -hmm. in payment of a debt. However, si creditor, si an incapacitated minor, loses 700 pesos of the money in gambling or due uh -huh. to negligence uh -huh. or ignorance. Di ba, nawala ni minor. Nagbahid ka ng, seven, ng, one, ng 1,000 kay minor. Naiwala naman ni minor yung 700 pesos. Mm -hmm. Oo. Oh. So in this, in this case, ano mangyayari? In this case, the payment should be considered as made only to the extent of 300. Kasi 300 lang yung naiwan in the, in, na. Naging, and naging beneficial, beneficial sa kanya. Uh -oh. So in that case, si debtor would still be uh, compelled. Liable to pay five, 700 pesos. Mm -hmm. Naman. Well, on the other hand, if the creditor kept the money paid or spent it for purposes useful to yeah. him naman, the payment should be valid. Oh, so the payment should be valid. But take note that D should prove that yeah. it was kept, it was beneficial yes. uh, to the minor. Okay. So, nangyayari kasi sa akin din yan. Halimbawa, yeah. ganito. Minsan sa mga pamapamangkin mo ng utang-utang uh -oh. ka, di ba? So, minsan, nagka, minsan nga, mas mayaman pa yung mga pamangkin ko dati kasi marami silang savings. So, dati pag nauubusan ako, nakakahiram ako sa pamangkin ko. So, ganun pala yung mangyayari doon. Kung halimbawa, incapacitated yun, di ba? So, kung halimbawa, nagbayad ako din sa pamangkin ko tapos ng utang, tapos so, nagamit niya, years, 15, years oh, 15 years old pa lang yung pamangkin ko, uh -oh. nagamit niya sa, let's say, gambling, or iwala na kasi bata eh. So in that case, um, I'm still liable to pay. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Kung magkano yung naiwala ng bata ko. Uh -oh. Unless I can prove na hindi naman nawala. Uh -oh. It was beneficial naman sa akin. Okay? So, doon naman tayo sa pangalawa. Uh -oh. Under 1241. Second paragraph. Yes, so, dito yeah. naman may payment. But the payment is made to a third person. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Sabi dyan, payment to a third person or a wrong party is not valid except insofar as it has redounded to the benefit of the creditor. Hmm. Would you, oh. Is that presumed? Hindi. Kagaya din nung una, hmm. that the creditor was benefited by the payment made by the debtor to a third person is not presumed hmm. and must therefore be satisfactorily established by the person interested in proving this fact. Mm. In the absence of such proof, the payment thereof in error and in good faith will not deprive the creditor of his right to demand the payment. Notice guys, na under Article 1241, in both instances, it's incumbent upon the debtor who paid to uh, prove, satisfactorily, satisfactorily prove, prove that it has been beneficial to the incapacitated person or it the has credit, redounded to the, benefit, the ben to the benefit of the, the creditor. But there are exceptions yes. to this general rule. And what are the exceptions? So, may exception Sorry, naman. Hindi na kailangang i-prove. Ah, yung kailangang hmm. hindi na kailangang i-prove kapag uh, in case of subrogation of the payer in the creditor's rights, mm -hmm. ratification by the creditor, and stopel on the part of the creditor. Mm -hmm. Because so, in, in, in such cases, attorney, the yes. benefit of the creditor is, is to presumed. be presumed. Mm -hmm. Sa cases na yan. Although, esto, uh, though es, through estopel, an admission or representation is rendered conclusive upon mm -hmm. the person making it and cannot be denied or disproved against the person relying mm -hmm. on yes. so the reason why the burden of proving is dispensed with is because of the doctrine of estopel, estopel. in this case mm -hmm. the doctrine of estopel. correct so let's have an example mm -hmm. the debtor is indebted to the creditor in the amount of 1000 pesos on the date of the maturity of the obligation payment was made by the debtor to a third person. Mm -hmm. In this case, the debtor is still liable to the creditor. Mm -hmm. If the third person delivered 700 pesos mm -hmm. to the creditor, creditor, the payment by D or the debtor is valid only to the extent of 700 pesos. Kasi mm -hmm. yan lang yung naging beneficial mm -hmm. kay creditor. But, but, the debtor must prove the delivery mm -hmm. of the money to the creditor. Absolute rule ba yan? Attorney Uy? Or may exception yan. dyan? Yan. Ang exception dyan is 
if T, if the third person acquired the creditor's right against the debtor, mm -hmm. or if the creditor ratified or subsequently consented to the payment to the third person, or if before payment, the debtor has been led to believe by the creditor's conduct or fault that the third person had authority to receive the payment, even if the third person had, in fact, no such authority. So, let's simplify. Mm -hmm. Simplify natin. So, ang sinasabi lang dyan is that uh, the um, obligation of the debtor to pay uh, to the creditor, even if he has paid it to a third person, um, yung obligation niya to pay will be extinguished if it can be shown uh -oh, that uh, such payment, has been, payment has been beneficial to, to the, the creditor. Uh, creditor. Uh -oh. However, there are instances wherein that uh, burden of proof is dispensed with uh, kapag um, uh -oh. yung una, una, may subrogation of the third person in the creditor's right. So, if yung the una, person, yung una is subrogation of the payer in the creditor's right. Salimbawa, um, di ba nagbayad si debtor kay third person mm, T. Mm. However, if subsequently, si creditor ni debtor ay naging uh, debtor ni T. Yan. So, parang ang nangyari, yes, nagbayad nga si debtor kay third person T. Pero, uh, subsequent naman to that kasi, is nagkaroon din ng agreement si creditor at saka si third, third person, person. Wherein nagkaroon ng utang si, si creditor, creditor kay third, third person. person. So, in short, para bang nasobrogate lang yung rights, si, yung, ng, uh, yung rights ni creditor, creditor from the debtor, nasobrogate papunta kay third, third person. person to the uh, Original, original creditor. Uh -oh. okay. So, parang palit lang. Palit lang, uh -huh. oo. Kung ano yung ibabayad ko supposedly kay creditor, creditor. si, ibinayad ko na lang kay third person, person T. Para hindi na si creditor ang magbayad kay okay. third person. So, abrogation okay. yung nangyari ito. Uh -oh. Okay? Against natin yan. Okay. Diba? Pangalawa. Yung ratification. Hmm. Paano ba nangyayari nagkakaroon ng ratification? O, halimbawa, um, okay, creditor si attorney Oy. Ako yung debtor. May Nag third person. Oh, may third person. Nagbayad ako kay third person. Mm -hmm. Sinabi ko ngayon kay uh, attorney Oy. Attorney Oy, uh, nagbayad ako, nagbayad kay, ako ganun, kay third person. Kay third person. Yeah. Sabi ko naman, eh, sige. Nag-consent. Oo. Oh, oh. Okay, ratify. Okay. Ratify. That's ratification. No, that's ratification. ratification. Though, uh, ibig sabihin lang ng ratification, at that time na nagbayad ako kay third person, wala walang, siyang knowledge. Yes, walang knowledge. Walang consent. But But thereafter, thereafter, uh -oh. he consented na. Nag-consent. So, uh -huh. hindi mo pwedeng itanggi yan, i-ratify mo. Oo, uh -oh, correct. And yung last then is yung estopel. Estopel on the part of the creditor. For example naman ito, uh, yung third person is the agent. Mm -hmm. oh, apparent agent. Apparent agent. Oh. Para naging customary na sa kanila, na pag may utang kay creditor, ang laging naniningil, halimbawa, ay yung mm -hmm. tao niyo. Third person. Third Ngayon. person, oh. diba? So, uh, halimbawa ay katiwala niya. Oo, oh, oh, mm. yun. Kanang kamay, Kanang baga. Kanang kamay, bagman. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. So, <laughs> may patayo pa lang oh, oh, oh. So, dun, dun mo binayad sa kanyang ano, um, kanang kamay, eh, apparent agent niya, eh, diba? Oh. So, in that case, hindi pwedeng i-deny ni creditor yung payment na yun. At hindi ko kailang i-prove na it has been beneficial to do? attorney Oy as the creditor. Kasi yes. nga, agent niya yun eh. So, yes. there is a presumption that it's beneficial to her. Yes. Or for some series of events na may utang ka kay creditor, dun ka nagbabayad kay third person. Customary. Oh, customary. Okay. Napaka... It is topel on the part of the creditor. So, tatandaan niya yung tatlo ha. Yes. Those are the exception exceptions yes. in the general rule. Okay? Okay. So, let's, let's proceed. proceed with Article 1242. So, payment made in good faith to any person in possession of the credit shall release the debtor. Mm -hmm. So, um, if hindi na tawag na, na uh, payment to third person in possession, possession of, of credit. The credit. So, this article gives another instance when there is valid payment to a third person. Okay. Kasi nga, yung third person na ito, siya na yung may possession of mm -hmm. the credit. Mm -hmm. So, let's give an example. Okay. So, for example, si debtor D is indebted to the creditor C in the amount of, let's say, 1,000 pesos, which indebtedness is evidenced by a promissory note signed by uh, debtor in favor of the creditor. creditor. However, si creditor, he lost the promissory note, which was later found by a third person, person. T. 
who demanded payment from these. So, parang may halong ano to, um, mm. sa nego. Oh. So, in that case, payment to T, would it be valid or not, attorney? So, payment to T or is not person. valid because that third person is the possessor. Possessor merely of the document evidencing the credit and not the credit itself. Take note oh. of that. May difference. Nakita lang naman niya yung, ano, yung promissory note. Mm. Pwede nang pinuha pa niya. Oo, oh, oh, pwede nang ninakaw pa nga niya. Di ba? Oh. So just because that person holds the document yes. evidencing the credit doesn't mean that you have to pay to that person because he might not have the right to the credit itself. Because ang sabi dyan, he is merely the possessor of the document evidencing the credit, not the credit itself. itself. Ayan, pinag-uusapan natin sa Article 1242 is possessor, possessor. or possessor of, of the, the Credit. credit, not the document evidence yes. in the credit. So, take note of that. Be very, very vigilant and keen on that. Let's proceed with Article 1243. Yes, so, payment made to the creditor by the debtor after the latter has been judicially ordered to retain the debt shall not be valid. Mm. Or the invalid payment. Kailan? May invalid payment. When payment to creditor yeah. Not valid, right? Ito na, di ba general rule? Kapag nagbayad ka dun sa pinakakotangan mo sa creditor mo, ano, bakit naging invalid? invalid? Eh, nangyayari pa lang yung bayad pa rin. Yes. At isang Under example lang 1243. Ano yan, attorney Oy? Okay, siguro para mas maintindihan natin yung ano na yan, uh, article na yan, let's just give an example. example. Uh, For example, si D, debtor owes the creditor C the amount of 1,000 pesos. <laughs> e, in turn, owes the debtor D 1,000 pesos. <laughs> Now, in an action by the creditor against D, si E, upon petition of the creditor C may be ordered by the court not to pay D and oh. instead to retain the debt in the meantime. Oh, oh. In this case, the debt of E is said to be garnished, garnished or is subjected, subjected to payment to, uh, by C. to, uh, C. to C. So, um, in short, ano lang eh, may, may court order kasi dito. Oh, oh. Okay. Kung halimbawa ay may pagkakautang ako kay Atty. Uy, willing to pay ako kay Atty. Uy. However, si Atty. Uy, inasasangkot oh, sa isang kaso. Case. May pending oh, case. Oh, oh. Siya ay may pagkakautang sa isang creditor. Oo, oh, oh. halimbawa, kay creditor, okay? Okay, creditor. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, kahit na magbayad ako kay Atty. Uy, ng pagkakautang ko sa kanya, kung prior to payment, nakareceive ako ng order yes, from the court. Yes, from the court. ng court na ko, Atty. Uy, Bendrick Maralit, yung utang mo kay Atty. Uy, i-hold mo muna yes. for the meantime kasi okay. may current dispute yan with a creditor or C. Kasi si court, pwedeng i-, i Depende pa kasi, yung outcome kasi ng pagbabayad ng Atty. Bendrick, pwedeng uh, manalos, for example, manalos si Another creditor. creditor. Yung creditor ko, halimbawa siya yung manalo sa case, pwedeng i-garnish niya yung pagkakautang sa akin ni Attorney Maralit. Di ba naalala niya yan? That's one of the um, remedies of the na meron ng creditor. Kapag yung hindi maka... Yung uh, uh, property of so, the, debtor. the debtor. So, part of that yun. So, kapag ako ay nasabihan na ng court na i-hold ko for the meantime yes. and yet, nagbayad pa rin ako sa kanya, ay invalid, invalid yun. yung payment. Okay. Okay. Yung kalabanin ng court. Court, yes. <laughs> May sinabi dyan, judicial. Uh, judicial. Judicial order. Judicial order. To retain the debt. Okay. Mm. So, let's proceed to Article 1244. Mm. The debtor of a thing cannot compel the creditor to receive a different one, although the latter may be of the same value as or more valuable than which is due. Mm -hmm. In obligations to do or not to do an act or forbearance cannot be substituted by another act or forbearance against the obliges will. So, simple lang ang sinasabi ng Article 1244, yeah. the very prestation due yeah, must be complied with. Yeah. And uh, dalawang paragraphs yan. The first paragraph pertains mm -hmm. to real obligation which is to deliver a specific, specific thing. thing. And a thing different from that due cannot be offered or demanded against the will of the creditor or debtor as the case yes. may be. Kahit pa nga sinabi dyan na more valuable mm -hmm. than the thing due mm -hmm. as long as... The, it is against the will of oh, the debtor, debtor cannot be substituted. Yung second paragraph naman, it has something to do with the personal positive and negative obligations. Yeah. So the act to be performed or the act prohibited cannot be substituted against the obligation. So pwede substitute with the 
consent. Consent. Kapag may consent. Mm -hmm. Nga pag-usapan naman. So, for example, attorney, way. So, the debtor obliges himself to deliver to the creditor specific horse. The debtor cannot require the creditor to accept another horse, mm -hmm. although it commands a higher price. Neither can the creditor require the debtor to deliver another horse belonging to the debtor, although it can be sold only at much lower price. Mm -hmm. So, that is general rule. Kung ano na pag-usapan, yun ang i-deliver. May it be a real yeah, or a personal obligation. Sabi natin, the prestation may be substituted if the obligee consents. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pagod in facultative obligation. Yes. Ah, so, gulat kayo, no? may facultative yes. pa rin tayo. <laughs> so, in facultative obligations, the debtor is given the right to render another prestation in substitution. Mm -hmm. So this yeah, article that is the essence uh, of facultative obligation yes, yes. substitution. Mm -hmm. In Article 1244, will not also apply in case of waiver by the creditor or substitution is allowed by stipulation with, of course, the consent, consent of, of the, the creditor. creditor. Okay. Let's proceed with Article 1245. Yeah, this is important. Mm -hmm. Dation in payment. Dation in pago. Uh oh, whereby property is alienated to the creditor in satisfaction of a debt in money shall be governed by the law of sales. Mm -hmm. Meron kayo nun, law of sales. <laughs> so those, th there are special forms uh -oh. of payment. Oh, there the are four special forms of payment. At ang unang nabanggit dito yung sa Article 1245 yung dation in payment. Pangalawang special form of payment, application of payments in Article 1253. Pantatlo, payment by session, Article 1255. And yung pangapat, tender of payment and consignation, Article 1256 to 61. Alright. So, isa-isay natin, nandun muna tayo sa dation in payment and let's cross the bridge when we get to the other special forms yes. of payment. But dation in payment, it's the uh, conveyance of ownership of a thing as an accepted equivalent or uh, performance. Yes. Kasi, yun na, accepted as equivalent um, of performance. Why is it considered as a special form of payment, Attorney Marali? Mm -hmm. It is considered as a special form of payment because mm -hmm. it is not the ordinary way of extinguishing an obligation. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, an existing debt in money is satisfied by payment of money. In general, yung pag may utang in money, pag may utang ka, hindi yung pay money. in cash. O money. Mm -hmm. Pero ito is a special form of payment. Mm -hmm. So, let's give an example. Mm -hmm. So, halimbawa, si X, yes. siya may utang kay Y sa, in the amount of, let's say, 1 million pesos. Yes. Now, si X, he doesn't have enough money uh, to pay the 1 million pesos to Y. So what he did is to give his Rolex watch to Y in satisfaction of his monetary. My Rolex ko. My Rolex ko. No, Rolex ko. No, Rolex ko. The Kenny man. No, no. Kasyo lang. Kasyo lang ako. Kasyo lang ako. Hindi ako mahilig sa mga... Kaya naman ako ng ano. Mary Kay. Mary Kay ba yan? Michael Kors. Mary Kay. Mary Kay. Michael Kors. Oh, 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 the satisfaction of the indebtedness is up to the value of the watch only. Correct. So, alimbawa, ang value ng Rolex ay 800,000 pesos. Mm -hmm. Then, the indebtedness has not been satisfied yet. Kasi 1 million ang pagkakautang eh. So, in that case, may natitira pang 200,000 pesos. Alimbawa, si yes. Debtor, may utang siya kay creditor na, let's say, 30,000 pesos. To fulfill the obligation, si Debtor, with the consent of C, nag-deliver na lang siya ng piano. Yeah, no. Oh, na may consent ha, may consent. Yes. So if the piano, however, is worth less than thirty thousand pesos, for example, mm -hmm. yung piano is only twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. The conveyance must be deemed to extinguish the obligation to the extent only of the value agreed upon, unless the parties by their agreement have considered the piano as full payment, in which case the obligation is totally extinguished. Mm -hmm. Right, so Attorney Uy, let's uh, proceed with uh, another article that is uh, important to us, uh, Article 1248. Okay. Right. So, uh, we suggest that you get your codal and you read the provisions um, provided uh, by law under Article 1248. Mm -hmm. Pero ano ba Article 1248, Attorney Uy? Article 1248 talks about 
performance of obligation should be complete. Mm -hmm. So it contemplates obligations where there is only one creditor and, and only one, one debtor. debtor. Because joint and solidary obligations are of course governed by another article, so 1207 mm -hmm. and 21222. Yes. So, paano ba may extinguish yung, ano, yung obligation uh, through payment in this case? Yes, so, in order that payment may extinguish an obligation, it is necessary that there be complete performance of the prestation. The creditor may accept, but he cannot be compelled to accept partial performance. Mm. The debtor has the duty to comply with the whole of the obligation, but he cannot be required to make partial payments if he does not wish to do so. Mm -hmm. yes. So that, that's the general rule. So that but make merong completeness mm -hmm. of performance uh, on the part of the creditor and even uh sa debtor din, di ba? Yes. Um pero uh lagi bang well, absolute ba yung rule na yan or are there any exceptions? So this is only a general rule. Mm -hmm. Because yes. there are cases where impartial performance uh, are, are allowed. allowed. And, uh, what are those cases? Apparently? First, when there is express stipulation to that effect. Mm -hmm. Second, when the debt is in part liquidated and in part unliquidated. Mm -hmm. And third, when the different prestations in which the obligation consists are subject to different terms or conditions which affect some mm -hmm. of them. So, siguro to shed light on the matter, let's give mm -hmm. them an example under 1248. So, in the debt or um, he is indebted to the creditor or C for let's say 5,000 pesos, pesos which is let's just say due today yes. yung araw na to. Mm -hmm. um, in that case the debtor cannot compel the creditor to receive let's say 3,000 pesos yes. in partial payment. payment because uh, there must be uh, a complete, uh, mm -hmm. full payment to consider it as a payment and neither can the creditor require the debtor to pay only 4,000 pesos unless there is an agreement to the contrary. So, yun yung unang sinasabi. Pero kung sila na may nagkakasundo na yung pwedeng partial mm -hmm. performance, mm -hmm. eh di pwede. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, halimbawa naman si debtor, mm -hmm. uh, he owes creditor 5,000 pesos plus the share of, let's say, the creditor from the profit of a business, mm -hmm. which However, has not yet been liquidated or determined. Uh -huh. So, ito yung sinasabi mo kanina na partly liquidated and, and partly, partly unliquidated. unliquidated. So, in that case, um, the, the creditor, creditor may demand. Yes. And the debtor may effect the payment of the 5,000 pesos which is already known. So, yung part lang na liquidated, pwedeng in-demand yan. Uh -huh. So, understand the hindi mo pa naman pwedeng in-demand yung part yung which is... Uh, which is unliquidated, hindi mo po malabi demand. Yes. So, pwede talaga din yung partial. Okay? Uh -oh. As an exception to the general rule. Uh -oh. Another example, halimbawa naman, uh, if uh, 4,000 pesos of the debt of uh, the debtor, yung sinasabi natin kanina, is due today. Mm -hmm. And 1,000 pesos tomorrow. So, yes. there are two uh, They are subject to different terms or oh. conditions. Mm. Oh. 5,000 na utang mo, but Yung 4,000 is due today, today. and yung 1,000 is due tomorrow. Pwede naman uh -oh. So in that case, the obligation can be complied with partially. Mm -hmm. Similarly, partial performance may be affected in case the payment of the 1,000 pesos is subject to the fulfillment of, let's say, a condition. So, kahit na ang total obligation naman is 5,000 pesos, mm -hmm. pwede magkaroon ng partial uh, performance or payment kasi subject to different terms and conditions nga. Yes. Okay. So let's, so let's proceed, proceed to, to Article, article uh, 1249. No? Uh, again, uh, we suggest na uh, basahin ninyo for the sake of time. I know, hindi na namin babasahin lahat ng codal provisions since it's it's buying a lot of time. Yes. But we suggest nga na basahin ninyo in your uh, uh, codal provi provision. provisions. Available naman yan. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, for the purposes of discussing Article 1249, we need to understand what a legal tender means. Yes. Ano ba yung legal tender? So, legal tender is that currency which if offered by the debtor in the right amount, the creditor must accept in payment of a debt in money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the debts in money shall be paid in the currency stipulated. Mm -hmm. So, alimbawa kasi, well, 
meron tayong mga promissory notes, meron tayong mga negotiable instruments, etc. Uh -huh. So, uh, generally, these are not uh, legal tender. tender okay? yes. And they can only be considered as illegal tender when they are good as uh, cash, cash or when they have been, been in cash. cash. No? Mm -hmm. So, um, in the Philippines, yung lahat ng coins mm -hmm. and notes issued by the Banco Central, Central ng Pilipinas, Pilipinas, they constitute as legal tender for all debts, both public or private. So, unless otherwise fixed by the Monetary Board of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, coins are legal tender for amounts not exceeding 50 pesos for denominations of 25 centavos, centavos <laughs> 25 centavos <laughs> and above. And in those of amounts that exceeding 20 pesos for denominations of 10 pesos. So, according to me, what about sa yung 50 pesos? Pedi kita ng bayaran ng 50 pesos na puro betching ko. Yes. Pedi mo bang refuse? Yung payment. Hindi, mo. kasi legal tender yun. Legal tender yun. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's legal tender. Pero halimbawa, na... may utang ako sa 100 pesos. Pedi mo uh -huh. bakit ang bayaran ng 100 pesos na puro 25, 25 cents? cents? Hindi. Yeah. Kasi hindi siya legal tender. Yes. Okay. Take note of that. Mm -hmm. All coins and bills above 1 peso are therefore valid legal tenders for any amount. Uh -huh. wow. So, 5 pesos. Mabayara kita ng 1,000 pesos na tig 5 peso or tig 10 peso kung pwede. Pwede. Pwede 1 million pesos. Puro 5 pesos. Puro 5 pesos. Pwede, pwede. So, let's go dun sa payment by means of instruments of credits. Yeah. Kasi, well, so, hindi cash. Oo, Therefore, hindi cash. cash. Ngayon tayong mga negotiable instruments kasi in, uh, in the market, no? So, ginagamit talaga yan. So, right of creditor to refuse or accept, no? Promissory notes, checks, bills of exchange, and other commercial documents mm -hmm. are again not legal tender and therefore the creditor cannot be compelled to accept them. Yes. So, alimbawa, may utang ako kay attorney, uy, gusto kong magbayaran uh, yun, let's say, a post-dated check, or may post-dated mm -hmm. check, or manager's check even. Certified um, check. Certified oh, check. Oh. Eh, ano yan eh, in discretion niya sa creditor whether or not uh, she would accept it. Yes. Kasi hindi naman yung legal tender. Yes. Right? Mag-consent nga siya. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yun. So, what uh, is the effect to the obligation kapag mm -hmm. ang ibinayad mo ay yung mercantile documents. documents. So in that case, if there is a payment uh, mm -hmm. by means of mercantile documents, the obligation will not be extinguished. Yes, it does then not uh, extinguish the obligation until, until they have been in cash. Yes. And unless they have been impaired through the fault of the Predator. Kasi until and unless yung commercial documents na yun or mercantile documents na yun ay na-encash, uh, how sure are yung uh, na, alam mo yun, uh, may sapat na amount yung, let's say, bank account of the person yes. to, uh, from which the check would be withdrawn from. Oh, so, yes. kailangan na-encash mo na yun to be considered as a legal tender or unless masira or ma impair yung uh, mercantile document by the through fault, the fault of, the of the creditor. So, halimbawa, yes. anyway. so the debtor owes the creditor 10,000 pesos which is due today. Mm -hmm. Here, payment in cash and in legal tender is implied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. C can legally refuse to accept a check from the debtor and insist on payment in cash. He has the legal right to treat their contract as breach unless the debtor complies. Implied daw oh, yung payment, payment in cash, cash and legal tender. Oh, Siyempre, pag nangutang ka ng pera, bangi din ang ipambabayad mo. In cash and in legal tender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kasi nga, hindi, pwede niyang i-refuse na yung payment of yeah, So what is the consequence if, for example, the creditor accepts the payment of the debtor through mercantile documents yung check. Halimbawa si debtor, ako may ako yung debtor, nagbayad ako ng 10,000 kay attorney Maralit, creditor. Mm -hmm. And I paid through a manager's check. Mm -hmm. oh. And attorney Maralit accepted the check. Oh. As a rule, we cannot uh, compel the creditor to accept. Pero ang ginawa ni creditor, attorney Maralit, he accepted. What is the consequence? Well, again, in that case, uh, there is no payment yet until the mm -hmm. check has been cashed yeah. or when through his fault it has been impaired as when he has delayed in presenting the check yeah. for payment 
for an unreasonable length of time and the check has lost its value by reason of the insolvency of the bank. So, so for example, uh, mm -hmm. so Attorney Manalit accepted the check mm -hmm. that I paid, 10,000 pesos. Mm -hmm. So, ang sabi dyan, the acceptance of the creditor attorney Marali of the check does not necessarily extinguish the obligation. Mm -hmm. Unless, in-encash niya yung uh, check eh. Mm -hmm. na so, siya sa, for example, sa isang banko, mm -hmm. in-encash siya yung 10,000 pesos. Then, from that time, dun pa lang mapuproduce yung effect of payment, mm -hmm. which is to extinguish the obligation. Mm -hmm. O kaya naman, I gave him the check, he accepted the check, Ang ginawa naman niya, so, for example, six months lang yung clearing. Mm -hmm. Eh, one year, nung nagbayad ako sa kanya, after one year pa niya, pina-encash mm -hmm. yung check eh. So, ibig sabihin, parang nawala na yung value. The check has already lost stale. its value. Tawag because, oo, oh, oh, stale check. Mm -hmm. Tumalbog, tumalbog mm -hmm. na. Oh, so, in that case, si attorney Maralit na ang my fault doon or the check has been impaired through the fault of the creditor attorney Marali. In in that case, ang mangyayari, may valid payment na. Kasi, so, take note guys, napapas ko dito yung sa concept natin sa nego, no? So, again, hindi nga siya valid tender, pero once tinanggap mo yan, you have to present it to the Joey Bank within 6 months. Kasi, yes. mag-stay yung sasabi na kami way kanina. Kapag yan present mo, bayan that, at wala na palang laman, insolvent oh, na yung oh, nag-issue mm, sa yun yan, eh, kasalanan mo na yan. Mm. Kasi, you must exercise diligence in presenting it to the bank. And in that case, oh, kahit hindi ka nakakollect doon, consider it as a valid payment doon because it was impaired through the fault of the 